Welcome to Histrionics, incredible tales from before the now. My name is Denutheus. I am a soldier in the armies of ancient Greece, although I have been absolutely everywhere, which is why my accent will appear wildly inconsistent throughout the course of this video. And this video today is the terrific tale of Theseus and the Minotaur. Now, Theseus is an ancient Greek hero who lived many, 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 many years ago. And his mother and his father were not together when he was born. They had met on a holiday romance. His father was the king of Athens and did not want to leave his career as king behind, and so his mother stayed where she lived and gave birth to Theseus alone. But even as a child, Theseus showed great promise. When the ancient Greek hero Heracles, who you know as Hercules, visited the house, all the other children who lived there ran away from him. They were so scared of his lion cloak made out of a lion's fur, they thought it was real. Theseus took one look at the cloak, ran off to the woodshed to fetch an axe, and attacked the cloak with it, which either shows his fearlessness or his hatred of ostentatious guests. Either way, when he was old enough, his mother said to him, Theseus, I've got something to tell you. You are the son of a king. Your father is the king of Athens. And now you're old enough, you have to go, go, go to him. Go to him now and, and, and say, hello, dad, it's me, and stuff like that. Theseus said, very well, mother, I shall go. I shall go to Athens and claim my destiny. Hang on, his mother said. First of all, it's that way, right? Second, the land between here and Athens is very dangerous. Don't walk on it. Listen to your mum. Go by sea. Travel in a boat. All right, yeah. But Theseus, he did not listen. Oh, no, I don't think I want to do that. I think I want to gain a name for myself as a hero and have many incredible adventures on the land itself. So I think I'll go by foot after all. Thank you, Mother. Oh, no, it's, it's that way, isn't it? That way. All right, bye, bye. So, Theseus journeyed to Athens and did indeed have many great adventures on the way. He was, first of all, attacked by a thief on the road whose thought it was to smash Theseus in the stomach with a stick. How horrible. And when Theseus would bend over and vomit everywhere, he would rob him of his money. However, Theseus was wearing this. A linothorax, ancient Greek armor, which sort of means a breastplate or armor made of linen. That's right. This armor is made of material. The same stuff your bed sheets are made of, but not completely. Oh no, of course the linen is very tightly packed and wound inside, surrounded by leather. So it is very, very strong. When the robber jumped out onto the road with the club and struck Theseus in the stomach. Really? Theseus was not harmed at all. The robber instantly dropped the club and ran away, screaming, Oh, I immediately regret my life of crime, as I believe is traditional in these stories. The next robber Theseus saw used to um, <clears throat> bend pine trees backwards, bend the whole tree back all the way to the ground. When the top was bent over in a huge arch, he would tie people to the top of it and then let it go. <clears throat> It would straighten and fling people across the landscape. When they would crash to the ground, the robber would take their things. When Theseus saw what he was doing, he pretended to surrender. He bowed forwards. But it was a trick, because when the robber came towards Theseus, Theseus tickled him with this. His Corinthian helmet. This helmet is made of bronze and very popular thousands and thousands of years ago. And look, it's very shiny. You can see my face in it. Hello, me. Hi. But he tickled him with this bit, the crest made of horse hair, the plume. He tickled him underneath the chin and while the robber was massively laughing, Theseus tied the robber to the bent pine tree, let it go, boom, and it flinged him across the landscape with the robber going, oh, I also immediately regret my decision, and I can see my house from here. The next creature, according to the stories that Theseus met, was a pig. A massive angry pig. I know, I know, but it's in the stories, it's what happened. He met a huge angry pig that was bothering the people of Corinth, 
and defeated it. I don't really know how. It doesn't say in the stories what the pig was doing. Maybe it was eating more mushrooms than it should. Maybe it was squealing at night and keeping people awake. No one really knows how Theseus defeated it either. But I like to think this is what happened. When the pig thaw Theseus, it squealed. <laughs> and ran at him. Theseus ran away, tripped on some vines, but immediately ripped them up and ran all the way back to the bendy pine trees. He climbed on the pine trees and he picked up some cross angry birds and wrapping vines around them, he pinged the angry birds through the air and they eventually landed on the pig, which exploded immediately and the number 100 slowly floated above its head. Something like that, anyway. Eventually, Theseus reached Athens and met his father, the king. Now, Theseus expected his father would be happy, but he was not. His father was sad. Theseus asked his father why, and he said, Oh, son, I'm very sad. I'm very, very sad indeed. You see, Athens is not the great power it once was. Oh, no. You see, evil King Minos of Crete, forces us every year to send seven soldiers from Athens who are going to be eaten by King Minos's beast, the Minotaur. And the Minotaur has the head of a bull, the body of a man, and for some reason, the tail of a bull as well. Theseus said, This creature sounds horrible. Why does nobody run away from it? His father said, Oh, well, that's a good point, son, but the beast, the minor at all, lives inside a huge labyrinth, a vast maze, and nobody can find their way in or out again. I don't know what to do. Theseus had a bit of a think. First of all, he had to think about where his father might actually originally be from, but then he had to think about what plan he could use to rescue the Athenians who were going to be eaten by the Minotaur. Eventually, as he was a hero, he decided to pretend to be one of them. He accompanied the Athenians all the way, sailing across the sea to Crete, to the palace at Knossos, and pretended he was going to be one of the ones to be eaten by the Minotaur. When he arrived at the palace, he saw King Minos sitting on the massive throne. King Minos said, Hello! I am King Minos, and you are all going to be eaten by my Minotaur and get lost in my labyrinth. <laughs> and King Minos brushed back his enormous blonde hair and twirled three crystals around in his hand for no real reason. Theseus did not know what to do, but then came up with a genius idea. He pushed forwards. He pushed all the other Athenians out of the way, so he was at the front, right by the entrance to the labyrinth, and said, Stand back. I will go first. I will go into the labyrinth and defeat your Minotaur, King Minos. And when I do, I shall bring him out, and you will let us go, and no longer ask for the Athenians to be eaten in this way. He stood right at the entrance to go in, King Minos laughing at him. Ha 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 ha! But then, King Minos' daughter, Ariadne, saw Theseus be so brave and heroic and instantly fell in love with him. She ran over to Theseus and said, Theseus, I have a way for you to defeat the Minotaur and get out of the labyrinth. I have got, and my father hasn't noticed this for some reason, but I have got with me an enormous ball of string. It's huge! My father doesn't even know I have it, even though it's massive! I'm going to give it to you, and you go into the, the, the labyrinth thing, right? You attach it, okay, to the entrance to the labyrinth, and then unwind it as you go. And if you get to a dead end or get lost, all you have to do is wind it back up again to get out! Oh yeah! So, wind! Whoop, dead end! Unwind! It'll be, it, it, it'll be amazing! Do this and you will survive! Well, Theseus also instantly fell in love and said, I have instantly fallen in love with you, Ariadne, because of your incredible intelligence and amazing <clears throat> string theory. So, Theseus went first. He went into the labyrinth. It was dark and spooky and gloomy down there. He attached one end of the string to the wall of the labyrinth as he went forwards, unwinding it as he went. 
Oh, yeah. He could hear the terrifying screams of the Minotaur as he journeyed deeper and deeper inside. Oh, though, remember, the Minotaur does have the head of a bull, so I imagine the screams would hear sound like this. <laughs> Ah, the terrifying farmyard noises. Theseus went further and further in and eventually journeyed to the very centre of the labyrinth. And there he saw the Minotaur. The Minotaur saw him. The Minotaur was very cross and charged. Theseus was horrified, but tried to stand his ground. Nonetheless, he moved to one side and dodged the Minotaur. It charged again. He dodged. It charged again. And as he had been dodging, the string had gone wound all around. The Minotaur tripped on the string, fell over, and instantly died. Theseus picked up the body of the Minotaur and took it back to the entrance of the labyrinth, winding up the string again. As he went, he showed the Minotaur to King Minos and said, See, I have defeated you and your Minotaur. You must let all of these Greeks come back with me to Athens and your daughter as well, who I'm going to marry because we have immediately and almost completely unbelievably fallen in love right now. King Minos had no choice but to send Theseus, Ariadne and the Athenians back home. And they journeyed safely, knowing that King Minos's power was forever gone. Now, first of all, thank you very much for watching our video about Theseus and the Minotaur. Secondly, if you have enjoyed it, maybe you could research it on your own by reading books or going on the internet. If you're not old enough to go on your own, make sure an adult is supervising you. Um, if you have enjoyed the description of the Minotaur, maybe you could invent your own beast with different animal heads or arms or legs or superpowers. If you do, let us know in the comments below the video here. And do remember to click like, share and subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. Also, I should say before I go that Knossos, the palace in Crete that was owned by King Minos, is actually a real place. Oh yes, it was excavated many, many years ago and continues to have historians and archaeologists looking over the ruins. They have not found the labyrinth and they have never found the body of a Minotaur, but some historians and scientists now believe the Minotaur and its roars mm, might have been a way to explain the roars beneath the earth that earthquakes and volcanic activity used to make thousands and thousands of years ago. Thank you very much for listening to me. My name has been Denutheus. Make sure to watch other histrionics videos that are around here too. Take care out there and stay safe.